One of the most important accomplishments of the civil rights paradigm is that it acknowledged that the people with disabilities are discriminated against. Power to the people! Power to the people! Power to the people! Well, I think the first challenge was to make disabled people understand that the issues that they confronted were civil rights issues. For many, many years, for many of us, certainly myself included, um, we perceived our issues as solitary, as singular, as our own and no one else's. For example, if you use a wheelchair and encounter stairs into a building, you sort of ask yourself, what is that problem? And if your answer is, well, you can't walk, that sort of presents the, the locus of responsibility is within yourself. If your answer to that question is, there are stairs to that building and they should be removed, then you place the obligation outside of the individual. The goal of the disability movement is that people have choice and opportunity. And it doesn't mean your life is easy or that it will be perfect, but that you are not prevented based on disability from participating in doing whatever you want to do. I think it's well understood that both the Americans with Disabilities Act and its predecessor laws call for you know, something completely reasonable, which is if you build something, make it be accessible. This idea leads to the notion of universal design. And in fact, they're beginning to build and design for the broadest number of people, not for people with disabilities, but for everybody. And to take into account that you have little kids and old people and big people and small people and short people and tall people, and that those parameters need to be contained in design principles. And so what was originally considered a accessibility sort of obligation is now morphing into this idea of universality.